So we had these three principles, effective causes, leverage, doing something that would have happened otherwise. We illustrated this in general. Now let's apply this to the idea of comparing two career paths, working in the charitable sector, going to Africa and helping people directly, let's say, or um, taking a lucrative career, like the sort of careers you can get on Wall Street, and uh, donating as much as you can. So donating, let's say, 50%. Well, let's compare them these three um, different, uh, three different concepts. So first is effective causes. Well, here, earning to give seems to win. So if you're working in the charitable sector, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to work for only the very best charities. You'd be very lucky if you were able to work for only those very best charities. Against Malaria Foundation, for example, has a budget of, um, I think about $8 million, and it has two staff. It really, it's money poor rather than people poor. In contrast, if you're working in earning to give, you're able to target your donations only to the very best causes. You have complete flexibility over where you donate. So this provides a substantial reason in favor of earning to give. Second is the idea of leverage. So if you work on Wall Street and donate 50%, you'll be able to donate five to $25 million over the course of your life. How does that compare with charity work? Well, one way to think about this is to think that if you were earning to give, you'd be able to hire several charity workers in your place, and in fact be able to hire charity workers that are even better qualified than you would have been. So your leverage just simply has to be several times as great through earning to give as through charity work. Uh, the final idea is what would have happened otherwise. So if you work in the charitable sector um, directly, you're just taking the place of someone else who would have been in your shoes. And moreover, you're just adding one charity worker to the pool of charity workers. In contrast, if you're earning to give, someone else would have been in your shoes some other financier, of course, but they wouldn't have been donating nearly as much as you would have done, nor as well. So to a first approximation, the amount of good you do really is the amount of good your di donations directly do, because the person who would have been in your shoes would have done very little good at all. So I'll discuss two objections. The first one is rather, um, I'm sure is on many of your minds, which is surely the financial industry is really hard, didn't it, uh, really harmful. Didn't it uh, cause the uh, financial crash of um, 2008 and precipitate a worldwide recession? And um, I'm kind of agnostic personally on uh, the value of um, the financial sector as a whole. It has many good things and uh, many bad things, but even aside from that, there's an important consideration related to what would have happened otherwise again. And Nicholas Kristof, a New York Times columnist, puts this really well. So he points out that if you think an industry is bad, that doesn't necessarily give you a reason against going into it. In fact, it can give you an additional reason in favor of going into it. So imagine if before the financial crash, rather than um, these greedy bankers that are constantly portrayed, people who are ruthless and just aiming to make a quick buck. Imagine if rather than um, finance being populated with them, finance had been populated with sensible, caring, altruistically minded young um, uh, people. Um, maybe then the financial crash wouldn't have happened or it wouldn't have been nearly as bad because there would have been a lot more people who are a lot more responsible. And so when thinking about what careers you're pursuing, you need to be careful of self-selecting out of those careers which have the most potential to do harm, but also the most potential, therefore, to do good as well. Uh, the second consideration you might think is, what about the risk of getting corrupted? So it's all very well um, having these kind of lofty ideals while you're young, but then you start working on Wall Street, you got, start to get sucked into the culture, suddenly you forget about how much good your donations can do, and you start kind of wanting the bigger house, wanting the nicer cars, and so on. And I think this is a really important problem. It's um, uh, something you've got to guard against. You don't want to uh, make sure you continue um, to be altruistically motivated in the future as you were now. And that's why we set up this community. So we have over 1,000 people, not just earning to give, but pursuing other um, very high-impact career paths as well. And that means you've got this peer group, this social network of people who are still thinking like you, still able to provide you support and encouragement in order for you to keep doing good um, and not lose your ideals. And uh, I'm 
giving this as a theoretical idea, but um, even better is to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, someone who's actually putting this right into practice. And so I'm gonna move on from the theory and you're gonna see a bit of the practice. Um, and so without further ado, I'll let Matt Wagi take the stage. <laughs> 